isn't just go about your everyday life. It's about going about the Father's business. And that's been his desire from the get-go. It's why he created man in the first place. Oh, yeah. It's why he put his finger in your life. That he could take you in your day, in your generation, in your age, whatever you want to call it, and that he could take you in like Shittim would. Laminate you with the bond of love with somebody that you just wouldn't want to be laminated with that he could flow through. Remember the message when United died? Guess what? United's dead. And God is looking to resurrect United. But United is only going to be resurrected in one place. In Christ Jesus. In the Spirit. Through the Spirit. By the Spirit. In a people that are called by His name. Amen? So, I'm going to go back. I've been, I've been dealing with, um, geez, for a long time about Daniel. The first couple chapters of Daniel. And look, they're almost in the fire. Pastor, I wish you'd hurry up and get them in the fire so we can move on. I'll guarantee you that most of us will be more than happy to let God work in our lives instead of throwing us in the fire to see if we'll burn or not. Mm Mm-hmm. Remember? Because the majority of humanity, even my own humanity, looks for one thing and one thing only. Self-preservation. Whatever it's going to take to save my hide. And God has come in where he's going to strip us of every bit of self-preservation that the only thing that is left is him. That's pretty good. Guess what? You know why that's good? See, most of us, Sister Donna said it, right? And then, and then I, because you read out of the book, and then I, I dropped something in it. As long as it's going our way and we can control it, hallelujah, Jesus is, Jesus is on the throne. Right? Thus saith the Lord, it's got to be God because it's going my way. I'm getting my socks blessed off. Everything's going great. Nothing bad's happening. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. Look, there's, I get it. There's application for it. But we find out, as long as we have, oh yeah, remember when Corey came here and he shared? As long as we got our hands on the wheel, that's trouble down the road. Right? Isn't it? Because God, what God's trying to do is strip us. Remember the little bumper sticker? Hey, God's my co-pilot. Yeah, see, you laugh because you've seen those, and, and, you, and you think, oh my God, you know that's not the way it's supposed to be. He doesn't want to be the co-pilot because he's the owner of the company. Yeah. Not only is he the owner of the company, he's the owner of it all. He's the, the big kahuna, the chief CEO, right? He owns it all. And he's going to drive it, fly it, whatever you want to say. Oh, yeah. He is the truth, the way, and the life. He's the only one that's going to direct your path. And even when it goes bad, we still like to try to control the situation until it gets to the point where We cry out in desperation. God help us. Help me. Because I can't control this any longer. And all God's looking for is the people that are willing to. Right? So. 
this whole thing about Daniel is we have the three Hebrew children. They get all the way up to they're getting ready to do what? Get thrown in the fire. But we learn through the story, if we can read between the lines, that there was a lot of training, growing, maturing. Oh yeah, what we're doing on a daily basis before they ever got to the point where they could see the unmistakable. Come on now. All right. It's like, I was in the service and they have this place. I don't know, they might have changed it. It's pro more than likely still there. It's in, Aber it's called Aberdeen Proving Grounds in Maryland. And it's a place that they prove things, test things. Guess what? That's what church is all about. That's what Christ's life is all about. It's, remember, remember, I took you out that I might bring you to myself. And when he put them through the 400 years of testing and trial in Egypt, and he brought them out and brought them into the wilderness of what? Oh yeah, sin, doing it your own way. Right? Come on. What did he say he was going to do? It was to do one. One thing only. It was to prove you. This is the way we'd put it nowadays. See what you're made of. Well, what do you want to be made of? See, it's like that, sec I think it was the second song, maybe the third song, that, you know, in his arms of love. But the truth is where the scripture comes from out of that is where I am, there you'll be. Because he went to prepare a place. Well, where did, where's that place at that he went to prepare? Everybody get that? Yeah. If you didn't get that, you can come see me after church and I'll explain it to you. Because God is spirit. Yes. All right, here we go. All right. So, we get down here to Daniel, chapter 3, verse 24. And back to the statement I said earlier about every message has been preached and I put the title on this a people of no corruption but the more I thought about it and pondered it and through the week, through the week two weeks, whatever it was because actually I was supposed to share it last week I didn't share it last week because God moved in a different way in the house which was good because to me that was the fresh anointing right? that was the anointing that flows from the head all the way down. And so I changed it to a people of wonder. And I know there's a few in here, they've heard, they've heard a message by another preacher that preached a, a message and he called it a people of wonder. But you know what? You are a people of wonder. Yeah. See, most of the church runs around looking for wonders failing to realize that God is the wonder in a people. Remember the deposit of God? Oh yeah, remember, oh yeah, Brother Danny. Right? Oh yeah. You're the arrow that's in the quiver that he pulls out. Oh yeah, the shaft is what? Polished, proved. And guess what you do? Oh yeah, it's your responsibility to make sure that the tip is honed. So then when the Father decides to shoot you into your family, into your workplace. Oh yeah, remember your workplace? Jesus is the boss. Oh yeah, and he pays your bills if you let him be the boss. All right, so he shoots you in that place, your families, all these different places, so that you would be what? The light that would be able to pierce the darkness. Okay? So here we go. And I'm going to read this out of um, the Brenton translation. 
It's an English Septuagint. And I'll read out of King James first, and then I'll switch over. Okay. So we know that We know how the story goes, right? Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Everybody know what the real names were? They're Hebrew names, right? Hananiah, Meshach, Azariah. Anybody know what their names mean? All right. Hananiah means God is gracious. Well, hallelujah. Aren't you glad? Come on now. Are you not glad that God is gracious? All right. But remember, grace is absolutely means nothing to you without what? Faith. Right? Grace does not apply without faith. They go hand in hand. It's part of the twofold cord. Oh yeah, with the Holy Ghost, the threefold cord, it's not easily broken. Okay, who's the next guy? The next guy is Misha. What is his name? Is this not what God is looking for? Who is as God. He's looking for a people, right? Is he not looking for a people? That are, you were created in his some other fashion or form that isn't like him. No, no, no. In his likeness is in, in his image. So he wants a people. His desire is, and he has a people because he's been building the man since the beginning, right? Our biggest problem is we can't see most of the man that's already been built. All right? So who is like God? And Azariah's name means helped of God. Or God helps. God help us. Right? Don't you love when you say that? I say this all the time. I say, oh, God help us. And I'm like, oh, I get this brain fart. I know, Lord, you are helping us. Yeah. Right? Help. He is helping us. The problem is most of us, we get... So easily distracted because we can't see it happening. And even when we don't want him to help, he's helping. See, oh yeah, that was the scripture they threw out there in Sunday school. I love it because we always think all things work together for my good because, oh no, 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 all things work together for good. Oh yeah. That's right, Brother Stephen. Because remember when they said to Jesus and they called him good? Yeah, you hear me say it all the time. Why are you calling me good? He says there's only one that's good, and that's God. And isn't it cool that when things work out good, or things work out God's way, it's good? All right. All right. So here we go. So then, right, the three Hebrew children, they were accused by the world. Because they were in what? Everybody remember where they were at? They were in Babylon. Oh, yeah, they were in the United States of America. They were in confusion. That's all Babylon means. Come on now. Look. Oh, my God. Brother Stephen said it on Thursday. I can't watch confusion anymore. It's giving me a headache. Come on now. You want to see Pastor get a headache? I'll put the TV up here. We'll watch the news for a half an hour, and then I'll just sit and listen to your conversation after the fact. That'll give me a headache. Probably give me a migraine. Right? Come on now. Look. You said it. The Bible says it. We've all said it. God put you in the world, but he never told you to assimilate with it. Why do you think the whole thing about go about your business? It resonates in me. Because the business is the Father's business. And you know the cool thing about it is, oh yeah, because Hananiah lives within me. Oh yeah, Mishael lives in me. Oh yeah, Nazariah lives in me. Because it's the Spirit of God that lives within me that even when I mess up, oh my God, He's still working in me. It doesn't give me an excuse to keep messing up. God forbid. Isn't that what Paul said to the Romans? He said, God forbid. Yeah. But oh God, we have grace and we have mercy that's keep working in us. Oh yeah. And while it's called today, 
He's given me an opportunity to praise Him. To enter His gates, to enter His courts, right? To come in with full assurance that He that started it, oh, hallelujah, He's going to finish it. I don't know how all the dynamics of that thing's going to work, but I believe because His Word declares it, and if His Word declares it, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. If He said He's going to have a people, He's going to have a people. Oh yeah, He has a people. Look around. But I don't see all things yet. Oh yeah, under my feet, but I see Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. High and lifted up. Come on now. Remember, remember when we played that little thing in 1965 about Paul Harvey? What he said about the news media? So why would you want to sit and... All right. Here we go. All right. Did I read my scripture yet? I didn't read it yet, did I? Okay. So here they go. They were accused by people. There's all going to be somebody that's going to accuse you of something. You know why? What's one of his attributes? The accuser of the... Go figure. All right. So they were accused. Guess what? They stood their ground. How many times do we get put in situations where we wonder if we're going to compromise or if we're going to stand our ground? There's a whole thing, the whole mess about go about the Father's business. Go about your business. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Don't be a busybody. Oh, yeah, today's proverb. My own, my favorite proverbs. Right? Right? Even a fool is considered wise when he keeps his mouth shut. I have a hard time doing that. That's because, oh yeah, I was supposed to be the boss and, oh yeah, the boss got hired to be the boss and just because I think I was supposed to be the boss, oh yeah, well, I went through that already, right? Come on now. Oh yeah, he shouldn't have been the pastor because I know more than him and he... That's good church folk. I didn't even talk about the world. Remember? When United died, God's bringing unity in the Spirit. He's only going to bring it by one way. By the Spirit, through the Spirit, in the Spirit. He started it in the Spirit. He's going to finish it in the Spirit. He's not going to do it any other way. Guess where it's going to get manifested? Oh yeah, in your flesh. It's going to prove it out. And you know what he's doing? Seeing how well we can wait on the Lord. Because, you know, if it was up to us, things would go back the way they were. Wouldn't we? See, that's... That hits a chord. I'm not being tough. Truth of the matter is, if we are all really seeking the full purpose of God, we don't want things to go back the way they were. Oh, yeah. Back to the first song. We want a fresh anointing. All right, here we go. I love you. All right, so they're getting ready to get chucked in the fire. And, um, oh yeah, here we go. Remember the king's command, Nebuchadnezzar, because they wouldn't compromise? He did the furnace up seven times hotter. Remember, I always like to say this, Brother Barty, he was talking about the numbers of seven on Thursday. Why seven, right? Remember this whole thing? Why six feet apart? Why six feet under? Same thing, it's still Adam, still death. Come on now. Come on. Why did the fire get heated up seven times hotter? Because it's got to be a perfect fire to meet God in. Come on. And what do you want to be when you meet? You want to make sure that you've been prepared for the purpose. What was the purpose, Brother Tim? The fire. Okay. Here we go. All right. 
Oh, another interesting thing. I'll never get this done. The Bible says that the men that took up, remember, the whole thing about the threefold cord, they were bound. What were they bound to? Huh? Y'all act like you're not sure if they were bound to each other or not. Are you bound to each other? I mean, when the going gets tough, are you going to scatter or are you going to really stick together? When things aren't, oh yeah, I, we already went through that one. Come on now. This, this is, see the problem is this isn't just preaching. This is life. This is reality. This is what we deal with on an ongoing basis. When the hits the fan, do we run to God or do we stay bound to the purpose that God has put in our life or do we put our hands on the wheel and try to go the other direction? That's why I said what we, most people are looking for is things to go back to the way they are. God is not going to allow things to go back the way they are. They may for everybody else, but I'm telling you, Christ Life Fellowship, they ain't going back the way they were for you. Because God's got a different... Oh, no, he doesn't have a different plan. He's got a plan for you. And his plan is going that way. All right, that's pretty good. All right. So, oh yeah, so they were bound to Jesus, right? Bound to one another. We, we went through that whole thing. I went months and months and months about the, what they were bound to because what we are bound to is far more important than what we're trying to get away from. It's the Matthew 6 and 3, 33 principle. Remember? I went through that whole thing about John 15, if you abide in me, guess what I'm going to do? Oh, that's pretty cool, huh? All right, here we go. Oh, oh yeah, I keep forgetting. I've got to finish the story. So, the three guys, or the mighty men in Nebuchadnezzar's army that bound them with the fetters, get ready to throw them in. It says that the fire engulfed them, killed them, whatever. But you know, I read this little interesting thing, and I don't even know where I read it at, but remember the whole thing about, um, what story was that? Achan was one of the stories about all those that were making the accusations that they were killed. Remember Achan? When he went in, when they stoned him, they stoned all of his family, Right? And then there was a couple other stories. I was trying to think of the one. I didn't write it down. I should have wrote it down. But the interesting thought was that the people that got burned up was not the guards, but it was the accusers that got burned up. And then the other thing about, we think of it, I don't know how all, most of you all think about it. You think about, we're thinking about this, this fire, right? This fiery furnace. Are we thinking about a door that you would walk in or are you thinking about a big pit that you would throw them in? Just a thought. All right. So here we go. Verse 23. And these three, these three, right? Three. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Cool. Cool. This is, we sang the song. Humble yourself. We love to throw out the, the scripture about, about 2 Corinthians, you know, if my people, if my people, if my people what? Would, no, 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 no. Oh, they would do what? Humble. All right, so here we go. Verse 23. And these three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that were bound together, right? Bound to God, bound, fell down, bound in the midst of the burning fire. It was a posture of being humble. Even to this point. Remember when Stephen, remember when they stoned Stephen? What did he do? He humbled himself. Then what did he say? Lord, forgive him. Right? So, so he walked. Remember when I shared the whole message where we have to walk in this walk of forgiveness, a, a walk of uh, reconciliation, uh, uh, because we have the ministry of reconciliation. Look, how else are people going to know? Unless they have a preacher. Preacher ain't me. Preacher is... 
Oh, yeah, he lives within you. Okay? How will they know unless they have a preacher, right? Stephen humbled himself, right? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they... Look, most people don't have, they don't have the foggiest idea what they're doing. Because right. if they did, oh, yeah, even remember the book says, and if they even knew that Jesus was going to do what Jesus did, resurrect, they wouldn't have done it. Right. All right. So here we go. And Nebuchadnezzar the king. Here we go, verse 24. This is really where I wanted to hit today. I'll probably never get it done. I'll be another six weeks doing it on these two verses. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. Okay? Here we go. Now I'm going to read that in the Brenton translation. And Nebuchadnezzar heard them singing, praising, and he wondered. So when, I'll tell a little story on myself. I had this little issue in my belly. Been going on for, I don't know, a while. Right? Well, then it got real bad. What day was it that it got real bad? Last, this, this past week, right? Okay. I'm not going to forget my point. And Nebuchadnezzar heard them singing praises. And he wondered. So I had this little issue in my belly. And I had this one day this week. I don't know what day it was. It doesn't matter what day it was. And it got the best of me. Guess what I didn't do? Nobody knows. Nobody knows? I wasn't singing praises. And because I wasn't singing praises, guess what it did? Oh, yeah, got the best of me. And then I wasn't a very happy camper. Anybody ever been in my shoes before? Yeah. Right? Not been a happy camper? And I wasn't very nice to my wife. I snapped at her. And then I had to walk in forgiveness after the fact. Because I had both hands on the wheel. Nobody's been there, right? Just me. That's why I said I'm telling stories on me. I'm trying to help us out here, right? Because it's hitting the fan, and people are wondering about God's people. Are you singing? Or are you... Okay, here we go. I'm going to give you some other scriptures. So Nebuchadnezzar heard them singing praises, and he wondered. He rose up in haste and said to his nobles, Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? And they said to the king, Yes, we did. All right, so let's go to Acts. I'm going to read some other ones. Oh yeah, let's go, let's go to Philippians first. Nikita will appreciate this. Philippians chapter 2. All right? I'll read it. I wasn't going to read it, but I will read it. Okay. Chapter 2, verse 1. I don't know if you all have a Bible like this. My computer has this. It has a little title above it. and You can either put it in or you can take it off. This is what it says. Christ's example of humility. Who's Christ? I'm glad somebody knows. All right. If there be any consolation in Christ, no consolation outside of Christ. All right, here we go. If any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, isn't that amazing? He said fellowship of the Spirit. Guess what? Outside of the Spirit, God's Spirit, there's no true fellowship. Oh, yeah. Christ, life, 
fellowship. Isn't that amazing? I didn't name that. I wasn't even here. Oh, yeah, I was on the top of the list when that was named. Who would have ever thought? All right. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be. What's the next word? When united died. Remember the message? This is what it is. The only way you can be like-minded is that you're united. How are you going to get united? He just got done telling you. Fellowship of the Spirit. Okay, here we go. Having the same love, being one accord, one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each... Oh my God. White out. I'll leave it alone. I could meddle right now, but I'm not going to. All right. Y'all could meddle right now, right? Remember Brother Stephen said there's four, what did you say, three more pointing at you? Right? Okay. All right. Look not every man to what? To his own things, right? So no self-preservation. Right? But every man also on the things of others. Let this mind, Nikita's message, right? Let what mind? What mind's he talking about? Remember when, remember when my dad said this? My dad said this back in, I don't know if it was March, whatever it was. It's been almost a year now, right? Who, it's hard to believe it's been almost a year. He said, this thing has come to bring division. Sure it has, hasn't it? Because United's dead. But then he said, but the Lord said he's going to divide you from your reasoning mind. So what mind do you think he's talking about? Okay. So the mind of Christ. So let this mind, right, be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who be in the form of God. Oh, I love this, right? I love this. Let's go to the Amplified. Let this same attitude, okay? This is the Amplified. Verse number five. Let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility, right? Who, although being essentially, essentially one with God and in the form of God, possessing the fullness or the attributes which make God God, did not think it to be this equality with God was of things to be eagerly grasped at or retained. Did you get that? Here's a cool one. All right. You know that word equal? Who being in the form of God thought it not to be robbery? Most people would call this blasphemy. Right? You're walking on dangerous grounds there, mister. Right? Because that's what they'd call this. You know what it says that word equal with God is? It's through the idea of seeming similar in amount, kind, agree, as much, equal, like. All right? Here's another one. In quantity or quality. What is God looking for? Okay, here we go. All right, let's go back to the Amplified. All right. Who be in the form of God thought it not to be robbery. All right, but he stripped himself, okay? Stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity so as to assume the guise of a servant, a slave, in that he became like men and was born of, uh, of a human being. And after he had appeared in human form, he abased and humbled himself still further. And 
and carried his obedience to the extreme of death, even the death of the cross. Okay? This is what, look, this is what I do. I can apply that to Jesus absolutely every day of the week, every time I read it, but I can apply it to my life because that's exactly what it is. It's a twofold principle right here. It's applied to Jesus, the man, but it's also applied to Christ Jesus, the man, the body. Okay? So that's the application to the overcomer. All right? Proverbs 25 and 26. A righteous man falling down before the wicked is a troubled fountain. Remember we talked about the movie, about the tree of life, drinking from the living water, all that? Guess what? If you're a righteous man, if you've been destined to the throne, if you've been picked, if God's picked you and you fall down before the wicked, your fountain stinketh. Right? That's all, he, that's all it's saying, okay? It's just giving you a balance of it. That's why, remember, oh yeah, the boys, they didn't compromise. Because you remember a few years before, actually quite a few years before, that with the Daniel fast that everybody likes to talk about the Daniel fast, they didn't compromise there either. And what God do? Oh yeah, what was the song? And he will exalt you. Because that's exactly what happened. It's the reason why they got accused. is because they were exalted in a nation and they were there as what? Slaves. Remember Joseph? Same thing happened there. Okay. Here we go. Let's go to, uh, let's see. All right, let's go to Acts chapter 16, verse 25. I know you all know these scriptures. Hopefully this will help you. It helped me. Like I said, I told you a little story. I had a bad day. The verse I want is um, 25. All right. Anybody knows the story about the Philippian jails, jailer's conversion, right? At midnight. I think I shared once before the message. What happens at midnight? Nobody knows what happens at midnight. It's the darkest part of the day. But guess what happens a minute after midnight? The day is dawning, right? So, oh yeah, what's happening in the United States of America? Oh yeah, what's happening in the world? Oh yeah, what's happening in most people's lives? The darkness has gotten pretty dark. But let me assure you, the morning cometh. The morning cometh, folks. Come on now. Oh yeah, because the day star is written in, in our hearts. Okay. All right, so here we go. And at midnight, Paul and Silas, they prayed, right? Remember what happened? Remember what I read out of the Brenton translation? And Nebuchadnezzar heard them. They, were already, they threw him in the fire. And he heard them singing and praising. And he wondered. And what's the title of the message? A people of wonder. When you go to the grocery store, when you go wherever, and people start asking you all the questions about all of humanity, what are they going to hear? You chirp. Come on now. All right, here we go. Heard them, uh, heard Paul and Silas prayed. They sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was what? A shaking and a quaking. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open. Who's the doors? Yeah, you're the door. You're also the windows. And everyone's bands were loose. Okay? Let's go to Ephesians 5. And 19. Let 
You all with me? All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. Go home and read the whole chapter of, of the whole book of Ephesians. Right? It just it's. I can't do justice by just reading, pulling one scripture here, one scripture there. You got to read the whole context of what was going on. All right. It starts out chapter five. They're walking in love. What are they walking in? Love. What kind of love? Is that the kind of love that? No, no, no. Right? I said this to Sister Care. I said, this is how we gauge love. You want to know how you gauge love? You want to know how you, got, how, you, how you gauge God's love? Here's the easiest way to gauge God's love. Would you hang your kid on the cross? So you know if you wouldn't do it, your kind of love ain't like God's kind of love. It's the easiest way I know how to gauge it. Because I, there ain't a one, there, I don't think there's a person around that would hang their own. Look, even if you didn't like them, don't tell me it doesn't happen. Don't, hey, don't tell me it doesn't happen. It happens all the time. Right? But you wouldn't hang your kid on a cross. All right? So that's a, that's a good way to, like when we like to throw the love word around, that's a good way to gauge if you really love. Right? And then you can really gauge when the world calls love, it ain't love. They have no idea what love is about. Okay? All right, what did I say? Verse 19. All right. Ah, uh, there's so much. That, let's, let's start. Out, oh, God, I want to read the whole thing. All right. Uh, all right, let's start at 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, right? He doesn't want you to walk as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are what? Evil. evil. Right? What's that? What's, what, how do you spell? What's, 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 what's evil backwards? Live. You want to live? Stay away from evil. Right? Come on now. Is that not true? If you want to live, stay away from evil. What is evil, Brother Tim? I have no idea what evil is. Anything that displeases God. Both hands on the wheel. Displeases God. But thank you, God, that he's long-suffering, he's faithful, he's merciful, right? Oh, yeah. And I respond. Okay, here we go. Redeem the time, wherefore, be not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Everybody wants to know what the heck the will of the Lord is, right? It, do do you all want to know what the will of the Lord is? I mean, he's going to tell you right now. Yep. I'm going to read it to you. How, how many people want to know what the will of the Lord is? Right. Nobody wants to know. No, there's not, come on. Well, I got a few of you. I'll do like I do the altar calls. I'll make it easy, Okay. If you don't want to know what the will of the Lord is, raise your hand. I hope he makes it. Oh, yeah, he does make it that easy for us. All right, here we go. Oh, uh, what did I say? Oh, yeah, wherefore, <laughs> be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein it is what? going to get you in trouble. But be filled with the Spirit. Yeah. Right? What kind of spirits do you want you to fill? See, Massachusetts, we have the stories. They're called spirits. Yeah. Right? That ain't the kind of spirit he's talking about. That'd be strange spirit. <laughs> no. Right? Look, I might have said this the other day. I don't remember, I know I said it to my wife, that we have to be very careful because John said, try the spirits and see if they are of God. But you know that little scripture where it says, and they were entertaining angels? But do you know that there could be angels that masquerade themselves as angels of light, deceiving maybe y'all? So we have to be very careful what we entertain. And we allow a lot of times a lot of stuff into our lives that we entertain and we fail to realize what's actually happening in a dimension that we have a hard time seeing into. Okay? 
All right, so here we go. Be not drunk with wine where it is excess, but be filled with the, with the Spirit. Speaking to yourself in what? Psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for just the things that go your way. Oh yeah. Unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting... Oh my God, I cannot believe He put that in the Bible. Right? Submitting what? See, we love the whole thing about the putting on the whole armor of God, remember? But you know, you start up at the, the, the beginning of the chapter. You know what it says? Children, obey your parents. And you know a lot of times what we do? We only think that's natural. I ain't saying that because I'm the pastor. I'm just saying. We struggle. Oh, yeah. He hired me to be the, no, not to be the boss, but him to be the boss, and I'm the employee. Right? What did you say to me? Your kids know more than you. Most of them do. Most, most of your children know more than, the, than you. Ask them. Just ask them. I'll, I'll guarantee you that the majority of them would say, yeah, I know more than my parents. I did. That's how I got on the top of the list. See, you like that, huh? All right. I'm not going to finish this. It is an eternal word. My whole point in this, they got chucked in the fire. What did Nebuchadnezzar hear him saying? Come on now. When it's hitting the fan in your life, what does God want to hear you? See, really, that's what the point is. Look, oh, Brother Tim, you're making it so hard because you just don't understand. I do understand. I had a moment last this past week. Right? And guess what? I got whacked by Sandra. Oh, you all thought I was going to say God, huh? No, he was merciful. She wasn't. <laughs> she whacked me. You know how she whacked me? You want to listen up now. This, this is how she whacked me. She didn't say it like this, but I got the gist of it. You're not acting like you're supposed to. Oh, yeah, and the scripture says, don't let any corrupt communication come out of your mouth. So when we're murmuring and complaining like the rest of the world, or the, maybe even the church, or maybe even everybody in your family, now you have corruption coming out of you. And the Bible still says, I think it says, I looked it up this morning, I haven't looked it up here in the last minute or two, so I don't think it's changed, but this morning when I looked it up, it said that the corruptible evil communication, right, must put on incorruption before the mortal will ever put on we all want to live forever because we preach the message of life, but God has a process. Oh, yeah, remember how the whole story started out? Oh, yeah, they started way out back here. Oh, yeah, in Adam. And before you know it, they got all the way down the road, all the way down here, and because they wouldn't, oh, yeah, they wouldn't defile themselves, those that they were bound to, they wouldn't defame the name of their God, and then they get all the way down here, they get elevated because they wouldn't compromise, they walked in his ways because Jesus was with them all along the way, and then they got all the way down here, and somebody, oh my God, somebody accused them. 
and said, look at them. And before you knew it, they were thrown in the fire. Hmm. All right. Where was I? Oh, yeah, people of wonder. You know what Isaiah says? Isaiah says in 18, Isaiah 8 and 18, it says, I and the children that you gave me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Children, obey your parents. I didn't ask for the position. God put me in the position. Guess who my kids are? It's a metaphor. I get it. It's you. Yeah. But who do I look up to also? Oh, yeah, it's you. Guess who I'm bound to? Oh, yeah, it's you. I and the children that you gave me are for signs and wonders. Over in Zechariah it says, And the men of the city were to be wondered, or were wondered at. Right? Where are you sitting in? Are you sitting in the city? In the gate of the city? What is, the, what, what is happening in the gate of the city? Whatever, what happened in the gate of the city? Come on now. It's where judgment happens. There you go. Okay? And I'm going to finish up with this. I'll go back. I'm going to hit some of this next week, maybe. I'm going to finish up because Sister Donna read it today. And I could have jumped up in, in Sunday school and shouted about it because... Because this is where, we, this is where, oh yeah, this is where Brother Tim's, Tim struggled in the week. Okay? Hebrews chapter 4. Okay? Verse number 12. Everybody there? For the word of God is what? Slow. It's slow in my life sometimes. Is it slow in your life sometimes? Don't you wish you had moved a little faster? Come on, God, hurry this thing up, right? Let's get the show on the road. It's quick. All right, here we go. And it's, done, and it's what? What else is it? It's powerful, and it's sharper than any... Piercing, even to the dividing asunder of what? All right, wait a minute. Let's make clarification. Everybody knows what the soul is, right? Yeah. It's that woman you gave me, Lord. Yeah. Suke, right? It's the mind, the will, and the emotions. It's a separation. God makes it so anybody that says that the soul and the spirit are one and the same, here, here, here's the Word of God showing you that, no, it ain't the same. Just in case you didn't know. All right, here we go. Dividing asunder what? The soul and spirit and the joints and marrows. Marrow, right? Where are the joints and the marrow? Those inner parts, right? All right, and there's also what? A discerner of the thoughts. Oh my God, here we go. This is why my dad used to say what the church needs we want lots of gifts, we want lots of this, lots of that, lots of everything, but what we need, we need lots of Jesus, and we need a lot of discernment. Because then God will be able to see that the intent and the thoughts of our heart are, oh yeah, all about the Father's business. Amen. Yes, God. And there'll be no self-preservation. Right? Remember? Anthony Bourdain, Bourdain, whatever. No reservation. Self-preservation. Never mind. It's a cooking show. I don't watch a lot because it's kind of crude sometimes. All right. So here we go. Interesting thought, and then I'm going to let you go. That word joints. Okay? Anybody know what the joints are? It ain't them things that down there at the cannabis place. Right? <laughs> Got to get you to laugh. All right, here we go. Joints. Everybody know what joints are? This, look, you can't, make, you can't make this stuff up. So God is making a division where? The soul, the spirit, 
and the joints in the marrow, the joints in the bands, right? So here we go. The word joints. The Greek word is harmas. Sound familiar? What does harmas sound like? Harmony. harmony. What do you think he wants the joints to be? Harmonious, right? Why do you think when they go down at the cannabis place, everybody's harmonious? Oh my God. Oh my God. You guys are too much. All right. It's joints, it's joining a joint. It's noun masculine, right? And it also comes from, here we go, comes from another Greek word, which is harma, again, the prefix, the word, harma, harmony, harmonious, right? It's what God's looking for in the body, harmony, joints, okay? Here we go. You put it all together, it's a particle of a union, it's a prefix. Here we go. You got to love this. Oh, my, my brother Dale, he'd be shouting right now when he hears this. It means chariots. Chariots. Chariot. You know what a chariot is? A chariot. Oh, my God. Here we go. All right. Psalms. Psalms. Here we go. Come on. I'm going to tie this all together. It means, it means chariots raised or fitted together. Here we go. Come on now. Yeah, I got two more scriptures. <laughs> you got to get this, man. This is what I've been talking about for months. These three kids, because they were harmonious. They were joints. They were bound together. They were chariots of fire. And this is where we're heading. Here we go. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Where are we at now? <laughs> Psalm 68. Okay, come on. You already, you already know these scriptures. Oh, my God. Psalm 68. I hear you, Dale. I can hear him shouting all the way from Michigan right now because he preached this message. And I don't know if you've ever seen this, this, this portion. All right? And there's all kinds of stuff about singing, stuff like that in, in this. But here we go. Verse 17. And the chariots of God. Who are the chariots of God? Look around in the miracle next to you. Who are the chariots of God? The joints, the bands. Come on. You're harmonious. You're harmony. Okay? And the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as Sinai, the holy place. Thou has ascended on high. Thou has led captivity captive. Thou has received gifts for men. Yea, for the rebellious also, the Lord, that the Lord God, my King, in the sanctuary. Okay? Oh, I skipped the verse. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Might dwell among them, okay? Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us up. Us up. What's he load us up with, Brother Danny? Benefits. Himself. See, we're always wanting to look, we're all looking for something all the time, but God is looking for people that are givers because he was first and foremost a what? Giver. God so loved the your, you, that he gave. Oh yeah, he loved you so much that he gave himself to you. That you would become the what? The bank. Oh my God. Here we go. All right. All right. You know, 2 Kings chapter 6, right? Verse 17. Remember when Elisha prayed? Said, Lord, open my servant's eyes because he has no idea what's all about him. And remember, when, he opened up, when the Lord opened up his eyes, he looked around and he said the mountains were what? They were on fire with what? Chariots. And there was more of them than... Oh, my God. I'm excited because I know, I see this, this whole thing, this story about these three Hebrew children, all it is is a picture of the overcomer, and God is looking for a people. He's, this is Mount Zion right here. This is the people that God was looking for. This was the city that was set on a hill. This was the people that Abraham looked for. He said, I look for that city. And there is a picture of three people. Three. Why three, Brother Bud? Why three? Why not four? Because four would be universal. But God says he's going to complete thing before he ever brings it around universally. That's why there's always a remnant. So it doesn't matter what it looks like out there. Sometimes it doesn't even matter what it looks like. Oh, yeah, in here. God's working. 
And he's working it out because he sees the chariots of fire. Say the people, it's you. Look around. Go burn up the place. Right? Go burn up the place. Hallelujah. I love you all. Bless you. I pray, I pray for this. I don't know if I sometimes I get myself across if you're like, oh, Brother Duba. I pray that you get this by the Spirit. It doesn't matter what my jaws are flapping. I pray that God would do it by the Spirit in us. We need a fresh anointing in this house on a daily basis. When we come in, we need to be like Brother Bud said, take the garbage, leave it out at the front step. Oh yeah, and so then when you leave this place, don't pick it up. Leave it for South Hadley Trash Collector. I'm telling you. Go home with a praise, with a joy, with a satisfaction that God's working in the people. Praise Him in every situation. Praise Him in every circumstance. doesn't matter if it hurts. doesn't matter if it doesn't look right. It doesn't matter. God is in control. Because in Daniel, He said, look, I set them up. I take them down. You think that God doesn't know what's going on in the world? He knows exactly what's going on. Why is it going on? Because the church has been For a long time. But God has got a people in the midst. It's a wheel within a wheel. It's a fire within a fire. It's all of those metaphors that God uses. He has got a people within a people that He is raising up. That He would have a man in the heavens and a man on the earth that can bring the two together. Amen? Hallelujah. On your feet. On your feet. On your feet. On your feet. Oh, hallelujah. Love you all. Bless you. What? Good. When you're leaving. Uh, Where are you going to school at? Oh. You're going to school. I'm going away to school, but it's